everybody and welcome to my channel if you've been here before and welcome if you're new. Um, I'm Marilyn Maya and um, it's been a while since I've made a video because as you know I lost my beloved uh, Princess Jasmine and I want to thank you all for those of you who have written to me and sent wonderful messages it really really warmed my heart and helped me get through this difficult time because this is the first time in almost 15 years that I've been without a dog and um, yeah it's pretty quiet um, I want to do a catch up with you first but uh, this um, video is going to be about five books that to read when you're grieving but first since I've been gone for a long time in fact this is the longest in two years that I've been gone and it's been almost three weeks so I think that was pretty that's pretty good for me uh, being you know that I'm 72 but uh, I want to uh, do a quick catch-up because of course I've been reading and um, I, I have to bring these books back to the library so I just wanted to catch up really quick because I talked about this beautiful book, The Annotated Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And uh, I started reading a large print, uh, the earlier version, I don't know if it's 213, I mean, 1913, 1813. Uh, and then I, I, I switched over to the annotated version and I'm glad I did. Not only because of the beautiful pictures, I mean, but because it really made me understand the book and I read it with a wonderful uh, subscriber, Sarah, and um, I want to thank her very much for reading this with me. Um, what I want to say about it, you know, I heard some negative uh, uh, comments about Frankenstein recently and I think that if you're expecting like a horror book, then you're going to be disappointed because um, this is more like Greek mythology, which I know and I knew nothing about. And um, Frankenstein was also called the modern Prometheus. And Prometheus was a god in Greek mythology, uh, Titan, um, the god of fire. And it's used to, um, to um, like a metaphor for life for you know making something new out of clay uh, so Prome so the gods gave Prometheus the uh, they gave him the gift of fire so um, and so man has fire and man and fire in this case is you know new land and uh, it reminded me of like the volcanoes make new land so uh, in a way I can understand that but um, so the the annotated version really uh, made me think it wasn't like a horror movie like Boris Karloff I used to uh, see parts of he was Frankenstein in the 50s and I'm old enough to remember that he made Frankenstein really scary but I was not scared during this book. It was more of a sci it's more of a science fiction book and more of a psychological uh, story than it is a horror story. Though there are, you know, a few scary bits in it, but I really thought that in general, um, Mary Shelley was doing something very new and exciting. And um, yeah, so if you're expecting a horror story, you're gonna be disappointed, but um, I really got a lot out of it and uh, close reading was essential for this book and I talked too much about it but I really enjoyed it I gave it five stars and um, another book that I read and I'm just gonna go over it really quick is Alice Allison Bechdel's Fun Home and uh, this is a family tragic comma. It's a graphic novel actually about, it's mostly about her and her father. And um, this is very popular on booktube. Um, Allison is uh, a lesbian, I think, and her father was sort of, she's trying to say that he's, he was in the closet um, as many homosexuals then, as they were called, were 
as many gay people were. And uh, I found it more tragic than com comedic, but uh, she did put a lot of um, Proust in it, and that made it really interesting to me, the way she was uh, talking about how her father was reading Proust. I've never read Proust, but um, how a lot of things made sense. Anyway, if you've read Fun Home, I gave it four stars. Um, I'm not that much a fan of graphic, uh, of graphic literature, but um, <laughs> this one is worth a read for sure. So I wanted to say about that one. Um, I had to put, I read most of this, I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes with Death, a memoir. And all I'll say about it is I had to put it away. I did read it fast. But I had to put it away because um, it wasn't what I needed at the moment. I will say that the writing is superb, but um, I have to read it again to really understand why this memoir is uh, so beloved. Um, I'm very picky about memoir, but um, I will say it's beautifully written. Um, there were some problems with it, but I'm not sure if it was me or the book. So I have to read, I want to read it again because Maggie O'Farrell is, um, a very popular author, author on book two. And, uh, another book I had to put down for real is No Visible Bruises. What we don't know about domestic violence can kill us by Rachel Louise Snyder. And it was just that the first chapter was very triggering. I heard it's about one of the cases that she um, she investigated about domestic violence and it's very brutal. But um, I heard from another booktuber that the whole book is not like that. But I'm not. I wasn't ready for that. But um, I, when I ready, I will pick it up. Okay, and another book that I don't want to read is One Good Dog by Susan Wilson for obvious reasons, but I do want to pick this up because I think it's um, not as sad as some other books about dogs that I've read. Okay, so let's get to the what my video is about. So what to read when you are grieving, you know, because we grieve for many reasons, not only for the loss of a beloved pet, but the loss, the loss of a parent, um, the loss of a job even, you know, the loss of your health. So there's so much to grieve and books are so wonderful in that, that they help you. So these are the five books that I picked up during a time in my life that um, I really needed comfort read. The first one, of course, is a misread book and it's the first in the Thrush Green series. It was gifted to me by another booktuber. And um, I just started it. It's cozy. It's lovely. It's the 50s. It's a small town adjacent to the Fair Acres series. And um, I mean, just the, the, this beautiful cover with the ducks and uh, flowers. I mean, I know this is going to calm me down and make me feel good about humanity again. Not that I'm, you know, don't, feel, well, you know, the world, hello. Uh, another book is An Academic Question by Barbara Pym. This was written during Miss Barbara Pym's silent period when uh, she wasn't, this is an unpublished, formerly unpublished novel. And um, what I read about it, it's not so much of the cozy mysteries that, um, that she's known for, um, but it is set in a provincial English university in the 1970s. And I heard that she put this down to uh, write A Court's Head in Autumn, which was a five-star read for me, um, and that this is more of a mystery than it is like her other books. And so far I can't get into it, but I'm going to give it another try because I really love Barbara Pym's writing. So if you've read this, and the cover is gorgeous, all of the covers from... Um, Barbara Pym's uh, re-releases are beautiful. This one is a design and it looks like, I don't know, to me it's almost like a, uh, like the ink blot, was it Rorschach test? 
that uh but a oh yeah it is like a house that's what it reminds me of because i saw a window just now so yeah it is about houses and universities and you know maybe oxford um another book that is soothing me right now and i had put it down because i thought i had read it already i thought it was i read everything that rick steve wrote especially in the 80s but this is a newer book and it's called for the love of europe my favorite places peoples and stories now if you're like me armchair travel really makes you forget about problems that you're you're dealing with and uh i started reading this i said wait i don't know this and he has like wonderful stories um about places that he's visited before when he was a child and beautiful pictures you know photos as well and uh here's one as they have been for centuries rome squares are popular hangouts any time of the day and here's the photo and what i've uh heard about rome is that they live among so much beauty and you know old statues and you know it's so ancient yet they don't treat it you know with kid gloves they use their um their their ancient places and um and this is another i've never been to rome by the way and uh there, there's a saying see rome and die and it doesn't mean that you're going to die after you see rome it just means that after you see rome then you know you kind of done it all you know you could knock it off your bucket list and here's one of the plazas in rome that a lot of people are going to and if you know anything about rick steve he really believes in uh uh, traveling as he calls it through the back door or not going to the places where you know the you know everyday Amer usually american or british tourist goes to but to find the the everyday of the, of of different places you know going to the back alleys and and uh well maybe not at night in certain places but yeah so i thought i read it but i didn't and i'm really enjoying this so far and it's really i think it's uh like i said a book to read when you want to take yourself out of your present situation and um another book which i think i talked about before and it's really a very um you know it's it's not meant to be serious but it's called home spa pamper yourself from head to foot by chrissy panel malkin and it's in association with l'occitane in provence and uh when i was in provence last may you know this store l'occitane was all over the place i didn't think it was very cheaper much cheaper than it was here but um one thing i always like to do when i'm in a bad space is read about uh cozy things you know about um you know even makeup you know or or going to a spa and this is like a home spa and the pictures are really beautiful and um they have a lot different fragrances uh, and what they mean and perfumes and you know they're trying to sell you know stuff but i don't know when i see like cozy slippers and a turkish towel as they used to call them i don't know if they're still called turkish towels but um they're really cozy and um yeah i don't know about you but i like to feel cozy when i'm in a bad space and here there's a whole one about bathing and um yeah i just you know i'm dipping in and out of this um the, the photos are gorgeous and uh yeah so anyway this is if uh, you know i don't know if you like the same things that i like when you're cozy but this is making me feel really good a book that i read that i found i could concentrate on and i finished it is last night at the telegraph club it's a young adult book um which i you know some parts of it are young adult and uh some parts to me are for everyone you know they call there's a new new adult and i would put it under that kind of uh you know 
category. Uh, it's by Melinda Lowe, and she did a lot of research. Though I did catch a few, you know, I'm from the 50s, so this is uh, set in the 50s in Chinatown in San Francisco, and it's a gay romance, and it's very sweet, uh, but it's, it's hard-hitting in a lot of ways about how, um, you know, get the gay, you know, people had to hide during uh, this time. And uh, the Telegraph Club was a gay nightclub. And uh, the main character, Lily, um, she's very innocent. And uh, she knows that she feels different, but she doesn't really understand it. And it's very sweet the way it goes into her coming out as a lesbian. And uh, I loved it. I really loved it. Um, the one thing I didn't love was that it goes into a lot of history. She's, I think she's trying to do too much. So, for example, before, um, you know, she breaks up the story and does uh, some history lessons, like 1931, Japan invades Manchuria. 1932, Joseph Yu, who's her father, arrives in San Francisco to attend the Stanford School of Medicine. And uh, I just didn't think it needed all that. I think she could have told this in the story without having to, um, to have like a history lesson. And to me, that's what made it young adult. Uh, but, you know, she's a wonderful writer. And like I said, I caught a few mistakes. And one was, uh, I say it's a mistake anyway, because I don't think a young Chinese girl in the 1950 would be talking about tchotchkes, which is a Yiddish word, when she's talking about a Chinese store filled with a bunch of tchotchkes. And um, I can't see that a girl that innocent in the 50s would be talking about that. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, also, um, I knew in, Amer in New York Chinatown, I knew quite a bit of cla uh, women, girl classmates who were very... Um, dissuaded from getting an education and going to school. Now, you can tell me, I'm not sure, but maybe it was different in the San Francisco Chinatown than it was in New York Chinatown, because I had a friend named me who uh, her father wouldn't let her go to school. Uh, every day she was like crying that, you know, her father owned a Chinese laundry and uh, he was, you know, he didn't approve of girls going to school and she really, really loved school. It was really sad, but he didn't want her not only not to go to school, but not to associate with people who weren't Chinese and who could uh, maybe lead her astray. So, uh, but it, Lily, you know, she has a pretty modern family for the 50s, but like I said, maybe the Chinatowns in both places, the one I was used to and the one that, uh, Lily lives in are completely different, uh, you know, places in the time of the 50s. But it was very interesting. The, um, like I said, the romance was very um, sweet. She falls in love with one of her classmates. And um, yeah, I really loved it. And they sneak out to the Telegraph Club. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it. But I really enjoyed it. And I gave it four and a half stars only because of what I said about the history timelines that I didn't think were necessary uh, for an adult reader. Anyway, and the last book I talked about before, it's Dear Reader, The Comfort and Joy of Books by Kathy Renzenbrink. And I've been dipping in and out of this. It's actually quite a sweet and well-written uh, memoir, as well as it is um, a book about books, which is the most comforting to me when I'm going through anything uh, traumatic. Uh, the thing that I have to say is that I really didn't agree with a lot of her uh, recommendations about books, which I mean, I would say half, you know, not everybody has the same taste. So I, you know, I was looking at more closely at the book she was, you know, really recommending and a lot of them weren't for me, but a lot of them were. So, um, I still am glad I bought this book new, and it's The Comfort and Joy of Books. And uh, that's the five books that I'm reading uh, while I'm grieving. Um, 
like I said, um, I'm glad I'm back. I missed you all. I really did miss you. Uh, I missed being on BookTube. And um, I have more videos coming up about um, readathons and, you know, there's a lot of Agatha Christie stuff going on that I'm going to be involved in, hopefully. Waiting for me at the library tonight. Woo! Yay! I just love my library. My daughter went to the library uh, to pick up books for me and um, everyone was saying, we love your mother, we love your mother. And I said, I'm their best customer for 40 years, you know. So um, I'm excited about going to the library tonight and um, saying hello to everybody. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. And to all my friends out there, I wish you no grief in your life. But if you are going through grief, please consider some of these books and tell me what you're reading. So until we meet again, hopefully sooner than later, aloha.